All right, we've set up our catalog, and now uh, we want to go through a little bit of the settings and preferences of Lightroom just to kind of get everything dialed in so that we're really ready to work. So from within Lightroom, you're going to go up to the Lightroom Classic menu, and you're going to go down to Preferences, and it's going to bring up this what looks like a really daunting dialog box with a whole bunch of tabs across the top and a ton of information in it. Um, we're going to do just a couple of things and change just a few settings. There's a, some of them that you can that you can customize to your own liking, um, but I'm going to just kind of show you a real basic setup. So you can show the splash screen during startup. That's that little thing that says Adobe Lightroom Classic and pops up in there. Um, you can change the language of your Lightroom if you have an, uh, a language you're more comfortable um, working within. And then there's this default catalog setting, which is um, load the most recent catalog. And there's a few settings that you can change here. Load the most recent is going to be perfectly fine for this class because we're probably going to be using the same catalog for everything. And so if it loads that catalog, that's perfect. You can have it prompt you when starting Lightroom, or you can choose a specific catalog that it opens every time. Load the most recent is totally fine. And then when we get down here to the import options, the one that we really want to deal with is this show import dialog when a memory card is detected. I generally uncheck that because what happens then is every time you put in a memory card, it's automatically going to go to the import dialog, and we don't always need that. So I uncheck that. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to access the card from within Lightroom. You still can, and we'll talk about that in another demo. Um, Leave the rest of this checked and the rest of the settings on. I mean, you can change it to have sounds play um, when you want them to play. Um, if you shoot JPEG plus RAW and you want to see the JPEG and the RAW, um, you can say treat JPEG files next to the RAW files as separate photos. But other than that, um, we want to kind of keep all of that off. And then we're going to go into our presets. And when we get into the presets, there's really one thing that we want to kind of double check on here, and that is um, that we store the presets with this catalog. Lightroom will store the presets in sort of a predetermined spot. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of the presets that we're dealing with stay within this catalog. And then we're going to do our external editor. And um, we're going to change the file format to Photoshop so that if we go out to Photoshop, um, we will go into a Photoshop file. Um, we can choose Adobe 98 as our color space. That's totally fine. It's a pretty uh, wide open space. I would always choose 16-bit uh, uh, bit depth and then change the resolution to be 300 pixels. Um, it, the secondary editor, we're not going to really be worried too much about. You can... Um, Change that if you're going to use something else to edit your images as well as Photoshop. And I like to have it stack the originals back with the um, or stack the new files back with the originals. And then we go into file handling. And in file handling, what we want to do is um, if we're going to convert these into DNG files, which we will talk about at one point, um, you can choose to embed the original raw file inside of the DNG. Um, not to get into too much of a uh, of a thing, but um, DNGs are sort of a, an open source raw file, but you can embed the original raw so you can always come back and get to that. Um, when we go into prep for our, uh, interface, um, I'm not really worried about interface. There's things you can tweak in the performance tab if you really want to. Um, for the most part, it stays perfectly fine. We're not going to really get into Lightroom Sync. Um, Lightroom Sync is a whole other way of sort of dealing with things. You can choose, if you have multiple monitors, you can deal with your monitors here, and you can you know, set up a, a proxy server for the network. That's all sort of advanced level stuff. We're not really too worried about it. Then you can click on the little box and close out the preferences. The next thing we're gonna look at are the catalog settings. So these are separate than the preferences, and these just deal directly with the catalog that we're working in. And so when we go in here, um, on this one, it's totally fine. The location, it shows where it's at. You can choose how much you want to back it up once a month, once a week, once a day, every time Lightroom exits, or you can have it um, 
do it next time it exits or never. Um, once a week is probably fine. Um, that should work out just okay. We're not too worried about the file handling. That's all good with the uh, defaults. And then there's the metadata tab. And one of the things that we want to kind of change in this is to automatically write changes into an XMP file. This creates a little what they call a sidecar file that sits in the folder next to your image. And it records all of the settings that you put on your file within Lightroom. And it's a file that can be accessed by other applications. And this is kind of nice because if something were to happen in Lightroom and you lost your catalog, you would still have the XMP file with all of your settings on it. And so I like to set that and turn that on. And then you can close that out. And now we have Lightroom set up in the way that we want to use Lightroom or in a way that's going to make the most sense for us to use Lightroom. And now we're ready to get to work.